the disciples had been arguing among themselves. Nothing changes there then, we might be tempted to think. They had been arguing about which of them was the greatest and thinking of what they could get out of the movement that Jesus had begun. What they wanted was prestige and power by being elevated over all the other disciples to what they thought of as the position of influence at the right hand of Christ. Jesus turned their thinking about what is important and about prestige and power on its head. In the kingdom of God, service, thinking of and care for others is what counts, not personal advancement, position or power. What can I do for you, not what can I do for me? At a training weekend for new curates, the then Bishop of Barking, David Hawkins, performed a handstand to demonstrate the way in which Jesus, through his teaching in the Beatitudes, turns our understanding of life upside down. I'm not proposing to demonstrate one myself today. He was thinking of the way in which Jesus startles us as paradox, irony, and surprise permeate his teachings, flipping our expectations upside down. The least are the greatest. Adults become like children. The religious miss the heavenly banquet. The immoral receive forgiveness and blessing. Bishop David's actions turned our expectations as curates of bishops and their behavior upside down at the very same time that it perfectly illustrated his point. Years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah had promised a child born for us who would establish endless peace upheld with justice and righteousness. Isaiah described a time when the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard would lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child would lead them. Isaiah's vision of the peaceable kingdom was centered on a child born to be the Prince of Peace. And when that promised child came among us as Jesus, he said this, let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. The child born for us calls us to welcome children and to become like children. And that is the most radical reversal in a culture where elders were revered, that the least, the greatest among you must become like the youngest. Now in 2022, several of Nicola Ravenscroft's Earth Angel sculptures were exhibited here at St Andrews in Wickford. These bronze sculptures are of children simply dressed in soft silk tulle, who hesitate in time, leaning forward, hopeful, poised to dive into life, eyes closed, dreaming into their future, anticipating things unseen. Nicola says that her earth angels are youngling messengers of peace and healing, guardians of our future. And one reason why the promised child calls us to become like children is that children see the peaceable kingdom, at least until adults teach them otherwise. Children don't argue amongst themselves for prestige and position until adults have taught them to do so. That is why the children are our future and can lead us into a better future. We need, as Thomas Traherne wrote, to unlearn the dirty devices of this world in order to become, as it were, a little child again, 
that we may enter into the kingdom of God. By telling his disciples that whoever wants to be first must be the last of all and servant of all, Jesus turned the meaning of greatness and leadership upside down. No longer are they to be understood in terms of garnering wealth and power for oneself. Now they are understood to be about service, giving your life that others might live. And Jesus, as the servant king, says to us, I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you so that you will do just what I have done for you. Michael Curry, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, in a statement on the coronavirus outbreak, reminded us that Jesus came among us in the first place to show us how to live, not simply as collections of individual self-interest, but how to live as the human family of God. That's why he said, love the Lord your God, love your neighbor as yourself. Because in that is hope for all of us to be the human family of God. Through her earth angels, Nicola Ravenscroft extends this call and example to include our care for the earth and the creatures it supports. Her sculptures are Earth's messenger angels, silently calling us all to live in peace with nature. She writes, Earth's children are life's heartbeat. They are her hope, a future. They are breath of Earth herself. Creative, inquisitive and trusting, children are Earth's possibility thinkers. They seek out and flourish in fellowship, in oneness, and being naturally open-hearted and wide-eyed, hungry for mystery, delight, and wonder. They embrace diversity with the dignity of difference. These are the children that we are called to welcome. These are the children we are to become the children to whom the peaceable kingdom belongs. Nicola's earth angels stand together peacefully as friends, vulnerable and strong, silently singing out their call to change. These little children lead with trusting feet, plump and bare. The Prince of Peace is with them and calls us to let them lead the way. Will you be among those who follow?